kingdom against powers of wickedness radio show kapow Yoo-hoo. what date is it today's date is uh january 30th 2017 on the kapow radio show brought to you by fifth hook media a digital publisher of stuff Go to fifthhookmedia.com. There's books. There's swag. There's some music. There's a bunch of audio teaching on there too. But you can't you can't get to it on the mobile phone. No. You no, gotta no. use a desktop yep. or laptop yep, yep. or something. The mobile I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me, but the mobile application is just horrible. Anyway. But there's a bunch of teaching well, on there. I don't there. think it's you. It's the technology. Well, I don't know. I should be able to get rid of it or something but there's a bunch of teaching on there and it's grouped in different things like how to study the bible or end times aliens and chimeras there's all kinds of stuff and it's just there's shows we did but it's all on there as downloadable um audio Mm -hmm. right right okay today we are going to talk about faith no faith and you like that that's my best Hebrew interpretation of it. All right. All right. I have no idea. But it's faith, no faith. Hichmen lo hichmen. Okay. Right? Sounds good. What we're going to talk about here, let me tell you what we're going to talk about, then I'm going to talk about it. Why don't you tell us what we're going to talk about? Okay. In the Torah, in the Pentateuch, in the first five books of the Bible, there is a focus on the response of God's people to the work of God mm. during certain passages in the Torah, during certain passages, the reader will notice that this response is interpreted as either one of faith or one of no faith. It's either or or right. it's either faith or no faith. So accepting or rejecting. Yes. Now, where we're going to go with this is we're going to tie this in. We're using a specific passage in Genesis chapter 45. And we're going to use verses 25 through 28. But in context, the entire chapter of 45, 1 through 28 is about Joseph revealing himself to his brothers. Everybody remember that story? Yes. When there was a famine in the land, and Jacob, who sent his sons to Egypt to buy food for survival, Mm -hmm. run across Joseph, who they had sold into slavery years ago, but they didn't recognize that he now was Lord over all Egypt. Right. And so... Joseph tests his brother brothers through various tests and trials. And the end result is Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. And his brothers are now, in this chapter, going back to the land of Canaan to their father, Jacob, to tell them that Joseph is alive. The words that Joseph said and the gifts that Joseph brought to bring Jacob and all his possessions and family back to Egypt so they could be protected there and grow and multiply. And God can then keep his promises that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then eventually return them to the promised land there in Canaan. That's what this is about in context. So we're going to use this particular scriptures, uh, verses 1 through 28, in chapter 45, to talk about faith, hechmin, and no faith, lo hechmin, because in this particular passage, there's both. And then you're going to see the response of Jacob or Israel as God has changed his name to Israel. We're going to tie that into the New Testament and Christ, Joseph being a Christological figure, in this particular passage, according to me, and how we're going to tie that into Christ and having faith or belief in Christ or no faith in Christ. And 
not just talking about faith unto salvation, but faith unto living this Christian life. You either have chmin or lo chmin. And when you have lo chmin and you have emptiness, no belief and no faith, then something else takes that void, takes that space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as a Christian that's saved, you have faith in God until salvation, but you have to have faith in Christ and his work and that he is still alive, Mm -hmm. very much alive in your life to give you that growth and that maturity and that discernment and that wisdom to move forward. Without it, you have lo mm-hmm. and it's filled with other stuff. You can't, you can't survive. Mm-hmm. That's where we're going with it. All right. Okay. But not today, next week. Right now I'm leaving. Good night. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kapow's laughing at me. Okay. So, so, Shall we begin? Chmin lo chmin. Yes. Will you give us, Ms. Kapow, some brief examples of faith in the Pentateuch? Um, I believe Genesis fifteen six. It says, and he, Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And that is also in the New Testament, because in Romans 4, it says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. And then Galatians says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And in James says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. That's excellent. Obviously, Old Testament, so many New Testament references to Abraham's faith. Right. Obviously, it is super Vital and important. Amen. Is it not? Mm-hmm. Okay. How about Exodus 4.31? And it says, And the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Excellent. Um, and then I think we have 14.31 and 19.9. Okay. 14.31 says, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And Exodus 19.9 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. All examples of faith, that's hechmin. How about some examples of lo hechmin, no faith? Numbers 14.11 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. And this hearkens to Mark 6.6 6, when Jesus said, um, well, the Bible says, and he, Jesus, marveled, which means wondered greatly because of their unbelief. Mm-hmm. So then the other one in uh, is Numbers twenty twelve that says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. And uh, in Hebrews eleven six it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. God. So just like the faith scriptures that mm-hmm. you read, Hechmin, vital, super important. Like mm-hmm. you said, you just ended without faith, you can't please God. So it's not just a matter of faith unto salvation. Mm-hmm. You have to have faith constantly yeah. in who he is and what he's done and what he's doing and his promises. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. You can't you can't waver on that. But just as, as as important as having the hechmin, the scriptures you read about lo hechmin, no faith, are just as important because you can tell that is totally displeasing. Yeah. Because the rest of the, that scripture in Hebrew says, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm-hmm. And if not... 
There's no gray area. Mm-mm. So as Christians, we have to have faith. We can't have no faith. Mm-hmm. Even though we're Christians and we had faith unto salvation, we have to have faith in God's deliverance, his healing, his protection, mm-hmm. his prosperity, his promises, everything. If you don't, there's no gray area there. Right. It's very displeasing. Mm-hmm. All right? So that's that's really the just of it. Faith, no faith. Chikmin, lo chikmin. And in the Torah, you see that happening back and forth, back and forth. Right. So before we get to Genesis 45, 25 through 28, I want to read something that's going to tie into this. What I want to say is that when you have no faith, it's a spiritual principle, as Ms. Kapow would say, Mm -hmm. and that having no faith is an emptiness, and that emptiness will be filled with something other than God. Right, 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 right. It's kind of what we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. About the void, Mm -hmm. entering the void, the fullness of God having the fullness of God enter that void in your heart. No faith, lo chakmin, equals a void. Something will fill it. But that something will not be of God. Amen. That's important to understand. So it's not just a good idea to have faith. It's, It's vital. Yes. This is a vital message. This isn't... Because without the faith... It's easy to be deceived. Right. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, many, 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 numerous, numerous, numerous Mm -hmm. people out there preaching a false gospel and false doctrine. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very slick at mixing the scripture and Bible study and heck, they even use a concordance and tell you what the original Hebrew and Greek words are. Yep, that's and true. they act like it's a Bible study and they speak with authority and tell you this and that. But yet the doctrine is a doctrine of devils. That's right. And without true faith in the word of God, a person will go sideways because then they're going to fill that empty, no faith in the word with something else, Mm -hmm. i.e. the false doctrine. For example, there's a gentleman on YouTube that has a big following, a big following. He's been doing it since 2004. And he has all kinds of, um, what do you call it? I don't want to call him tricks, but he sees things through logos and car commercials, Mm -hmm. movies. One of these guys that watches a movie and goes, look at this. See, this is exactly it's it's coming. The beast is coming because it's prophesied here in Revelation. And look Mm -hmm. at the movie. They're telling you what they're going to do. The fallen angels. Yeah. They're telling you what they're going to do. And he, so he, he looks at car commercials. He's the guy. He folds currency and says, look at this currency shows 911 was going to happen, and it mm-hmm. did. Now it's going to show the Hoover Dam's going to bust, and it will. Mm-hmm. And he's the guy that recently prophesied that New York was going to hit by a nuclear bomb. Mm-hmm. He, he prophesied that, and he gave a specific date before the inauguration. Right. He also said over numerous videos that Obama was, in fact, indisputable, the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And he would show you this by going back to ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs Mm -hmm. of Anunnaki or whatever his name was. And he would show you how the baby had an alien skull head and a serpent egg and then blah, blah, blah. And he looked like Obama and he had big ears and, Mm -hmm. you know, and he'd makes all these connections and that Obama would stay in office because he is the Antichrist. He predicted this. Yes, he did. And yet it's a false prediction. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't happen, he just keeps doing videos like, "Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm." yeah, 
And and <laughs> he igno- just doesn't repeat that anymore. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't repeat it. And ignorant, biblically ignorant people still listen to this guy. Thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them do, because they have no faith in the real scriptures. Mm-hmm. And let me give you a specific example. He, and I've heard him numerous times say this over and over again, and I heard him say this again the other day. He says, uh, Genesis 1, uh, I think it's verse 26 he starts with, or 28, one of the two, Mm -hmm. where it says, Elohim created man in his image. Elohim meaning gods. If you read Genesis the 26. 26. Okay, verse 26 is where he starts with Elohim created man, Adam, in his image. If you read Genesis, Yahweh isn't mentioned until chapter 2. Yahweh Elohim. Mm-hmm. Yahweh Elohim. All right, which is translated the Lord God. But before that, it's just Elohim, God. Or Elohim is plural, gods. Let us make man in our image, gods. It's Elohim, it's plural. Then in chapter two, it's Yahweh Elohim. So what this gentleman does, he starts in verse 26 and he says, Elohim created Adam in his own image. And then he goes through his little Bible software and he shows you that Elohim is translated gods, magistrates, kings, blah, 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 which is true. And then he shows you uh, the word image. Mm -hmm. An image means a similitude, a shadow, Mm -hmm. a, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so what he says, what he preaches, is that Elohim in that verse is not talking about Yahweh Elohim creating Adam, but that it's Lucifer, Satan, the Mm -hmm. fallen angel, and the other fallen angels who are Elohim, that created man in his own image. And therefore, we're all created in Satan's image. Mm -hmm. He says this, Mm -hmm. and then he'll take you to the New Testament, and he'll say, Christ, who was was the image of God, and blah, 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 was Christ, but human. Oh, yeah. Because later on in Genesis, it's it's, um, Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God created. What he fails to, to tell his listeners is what does he do with verses one through 25 Mm -hmm. that says Elohim created the heavens and earth. Elohim created the sun and the moon and the stars. Elohim created the beasts of the field. So he's giving credit to Satan and fallen angels for the creation of the earth. Anybody listening to him could fall for this very easy because he's mixing scripture and it's very convincing. He's very convincing yeah. the way he does it. And he's using Bible software mm-hmm. and he's taking you to the original languages. And now he's tying it with some crazy Nike commercial mm-hmm. or an Adidas commercial where they're hanging upside down like bats. And he's showing you, see, they're, show, they're telling you that mm-hmm. they're from fallen angels. And he has an unteachable spirit. Which yeah, you can't, you can't tell him anything. You, you can't teach him anything. He won't listen to you. If you don't agree with him you're going to die and go to hell because he has a gift Mm -hmm. and you're not recognizing that gift. Oh, he's even said that if you don't agree with him, you blaspheme the Holy spirit Mm -hmm. because the Holy spirit gave him this gift. So I, I think he's nuts, but he's, it's dangerous Mm -hmm. because people that lack faith in God's word, what Mm -hmm. I just said, God's word says from the very beginning, God created the heavens and earth. God created man. God, it says that. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have faith in God as the almighty creator God, well, now you're sideways and you're chasing aliens. You're chasing ancient alien theory. You're chasing Zachary Sitchin mm-hmm. books. But I think that's the, the, the lesson here, too, is that you're following after God. So you're following after truth and not other things, other things that are sensational. Exactly. So it's what and whom you're following. It's that faith in God's word. That's truth. God is the only thing that's truth. Mm -hmm. So if there's no faith, so if you're like, well, I don't know, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we were created by aliens and, you know, there's no faith there. 
it can be filled, that void can be filled with something other than God. And like right. in this instance, it's false doctrine. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to read you something real quick because it goes along with this. So bear with me. This is from the book that I wrote in 2011. I pub- published it in 2011. I'd never talk about it. I should. I don't talk about it much. But it's Martial Arts, A Biblical Perspective. And I wrote this book um, out of research with uh, Karel Mastraciana. Mm-hmm. And I wrote this book about martial arts. It's one of the most... People either love it or they hate it. Mm-hmm. Once I read this little bit to you, you'll understand why they hate it. A martial artist hates what I say. A Christian martial artist really hates what I say. Mm-hmm. Because what I say is that you cannot have two spirits in you. You cannot practice the ancient arts of meditation and fighting and have the spirit of Christ in you. Right. I did it for years. There are you can ask Miss Kapow. There are days I look at her and go, "Man, I miss taking kung fu or or being able to work out in martial arts and stuff mm-hmm. like that." But I know I can't. For me, it's anathema. That's right. That's how I got a bunch of demons in me. Yeah. I got demons in me by doing meditation and things like that. I did it for years, and I wrote this book out of expertise. So I'm going to read this to you. And I, as I read this to you, I want you to keep in mind Hachmin and Lo Hachmin, faith and no faith, because this is talking about mind, no mind, the emptiness of mind. It's a spiritual principle that applies not only to a biblical thing about faith, but to everything. Mm-hmm. A void has to be filled. That's a principle. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is, um, this is from the book, Martial Arts, A Biblical Perspective. It's an e-book only. You can't get it in paperback, but you can get it on uh, Amazon. Mm-hmm. You can get it on yeah. smashwords.com. Just type in Martial Arts, A Biblical Perspective. You'll, you'll find it. I think it's two bucks or something. This chapter is called Meditation in the Martial Arts. I'm just going to read a little bit of it. According to author Ashita Kim, the emphasis on meditation to cultivate the mind and the body is characteristic of all the Far Eastern martial arts. He continues to teach, Breath control is the key to proper meditation, which may be defined as the art of consciously altering the state of mind. This altering the state of mind is believed to lead to increased power. The undiscerning person may not see the harm in sitting under the tutelage of such a master in the martial arts, but many teachers have formed their foundation on Taoist Buddhist philosophies. For example, author and martial arts trainer Liang Shuyu started training in Qigong, which is breath energy work. When he was six years old, he learned breath control and energy work from his renowned grandfather. He was taught esoteric skills when he was eight years old. After learning Qigong, he started training in the martial arts. He has devoted his whole life to the practice of special martial power training. Of course, a student under the tutelage of a master like Liang may easily be introduced to the deeper philosophical teachings of the martial arts and meditation, just like I was. This stuff really appealed to me, the increase in power. See, I'm going to continue reading. In the martial arts, here it is, faith and no faith. Think about this. In the martial arts, the state of Mushin, M-U-S-I-N, Mushin, or Mind, no mind. It actually comes from the Japanese martial arts, that that term mushin, mushin, mind, no mind, comes from karate, you know, the, the Japanese stuff in their meditation. Because they believe as you do katas and forms, these fighting poses, if you can empty your mind, you just let it flow. If you have to think, oh, my opponent's throwing a right punch, I need to step left, block with my right, kick to the knee with my right foot. Oh, pivot on my left. 
ball of my foot go under his arm, break the elbow. You know what I mean? If you have to think, you're going to get pulverized. So the whole idea is to train where there's no mind. You don't think. So as your opponent attacks you, you just move, right? Like muscle memory. Right. But they take it to a whole other level in meditation, training no mind. So Mushin is called no mind. I'll continue reading. Mushin, no mind, is the ability to empty the thoughts and circulate the chi of the body. It is the same thing as Zen meditation. Emptiness is the goal. Mm -hmm. Once the mind is in this empty state, strange things can and will occur. Sounds, visions, appearances are all common to deep meditative states. And then I go on and I and in the book I talk about several other martial um, artists, masters who talk about weird things that have happened in meditative states. Um, Dr. Glenn Morris in his book, Martial Arts Madness, documents several horrible experiences others have had with meditation associated with the martial arts. This is the no mind. They empty themselves. In a chapter titled Magic and Mysticism, Experiences from the Field, one preacher's son was attacked and bit by a vision of a giant spider while practicing Qigong. And since then has been visited by a dark haired woman, even when not meditating, Mm. he has been diagnosed as a functioning psychotic. Other claims to have been visited by a large bat, which bit him on the nose during deep meditation. The next day he had physical puncture wounds around his nose, coupled with confusion. There are several stories of ancient grandmasters of the martial arts visiting people while engaged in deep meditation. So you're going to be visited by this little old Chinese guy with a long beard going, I am Lo Ching. Mm-hmm. You want that? Nope. The story is the same. The visions of these masters tell the students they are lazy and need to practice more and get deeper into meditation. Mm-hmm. You see the demonic? Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you all of this not to do a martial arts lesson, but to tell you that faith, no faith, lo chikmin brings the same result. There's an emptiness. It's a vacuum. It's a void. Something's going to come and fill your no faith. That's why contemplative prayer is so wrong, too, Amen. and dangerous. Amen. And yet the modern church, mm-hmm. the modern church, no matter where you go, is practicing contemplative prayer. It is an abomination to God to practice mm-hmm. such a thing. There is no such thing as contemplative prayer biblically. Mm-mm. Prayer is always with the mind. It yep. always has intent. You're always going, dear God, Lord of heaven, God almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ, please help me. Please give me wisdom. Please get these demons. Right? It, there's always intent. There's always mind. It's never empty. You never sit around and soak Mm-mm. for the Holy Spirit because you're not going to get the Holy Spirit. You're going to get the unholy spirit. That's right. You're and gonna meditation, get a meditation that they teach to empty your mind and wait upon God. That's not meditation. Meditation is taking the word of God and thinking about it, pondering it. Exactly. Like David did in the mm-hmm. Psalms. Yeah. This empty your mind and wait on God is, is, is exactly what I wrote about in this book. That's right. It's Zen meditation. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally evil, totally evil. Stay away from that stuff. Like, like it's a roaring lion after your soul. Mm-hmm. Totally terrible. Okay. Um, one young girl was mixing meditation with marijuana to assist in opening her chakras and obtain kundalini arousal. What does this sound like? Yoga. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Christians practicing yoga. Same thing. Totally demonic. You can't be a Christian and practice yoga. Simple as that. You can't. You can't have two spirits in you. Mm-mm. You either have God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, or you have Satan. You can't. Mm-hmm. And if you do do it, the Holy Spirit will convict you of it. You can't do it. No. Those poses mean you're yoked to the deity. Mm-hmm. Once again, yoga, empty mind. So this gal takes uh, marijuana to assist in opening her cho- chakras, obtaining the kundalini arousal. You know, the kundalini is that serpent snake in your spine. That's right. She started at age 14 and meditated four years before becoming fragmented from her persona and feelings. Her reality became gray, full of pain, and a fried uh, endocrine and nervous system. She spent time in the hospital, schizophrenic wards, and now lacks the appropriate skills to function in the real world. Mm -hmm. Apparently, according to Dr. Morris, these stories are common among avid Qigong practitioners. Okay? So that's all I'm going to read about the book. Martial Arts, A Biblical Perspective by me, Paul Villanova, on Amazon or your online digital 
thing. It's really a good book. It and, is an excellent and, and, book. It is. Yeah, it really is. And I will tell you what, uh, I, I started off with the question about can a Christian practice martial arts? That's the question. And then I give an introduction to the martial arts. I define what the martial arts are. I talk about non-traditional martial arts. And I talk about the search for power. The history of the traditional martial arts, philosophies and traditional systems. Chapter 9, meditation and the martial arts. That's what I just read a little bit about. Fitness and health. Mm -hmm. Right? Yoga and things like that. And then I talk about biblical perspectives. And then I give you all the sources that I used. Um. Very important. So faith, no faith, same thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to fill the empty void. All right? So I think there's a show right there. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I just finished reading Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare written by Paul and Linda Villanueva, and I highly recommend it to all Kingdom Against Powers of Wickedness radio listeners. This book is about saving your marriage from destruction. It is a true and vivid account about adultery, witchcraft, curses, spells, and evil spirits, all attempting to dismantle and annihilate lives. This is an excellent training manual for building a stronger marriage by exposing the tactics your enemies use against you. Ultimately, the book glorifies the transformational power of God through submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is a good thing. Demons in My Marriage Bed from all online digital retailers, such as Amazon.com, and Apple iBooks, fifthhookmedia.com. That is F-I-F-T-H-O-O-K media.com. Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, changed the way my spouse and I conduct spiritual battle and has increased our alertness level to the tactics of Satan. Please do not be fooled that such things cannot happen to you. Rather, get prepared and become the spiritual warrior needed to overcome in these perilous times in which we all live. God bless you all. Okay, Ms. Kapow, Mm -hmm. would you be so kind to read our text in Genesis? Okay, this is Genesis 45, and I'll start with verse 25 and end with 28. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. And Jacob said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. There's a lot right there. And let's break that down. Remember, the brothers are going back to their father, Jacob, to tell them that Joseph is alive. Mm-hmm. And to go, go up to Egypt. So let's, let's look at Joseph here as a Christological figure, right? For right now, let's look at this, okay? We all know that the, the Messiah came out of Judah, and not Joseph. We all know that. But for right now, let's look at Joseph as a savior. Mm-hmm. God has, has set him up as a savior for his people. So on hearing that Joseph, or in our case, Jesus, is alive because he is alive. That's right. That's what I'm talking about, faith. So when Christ says, have faith in me, keep my commandments, what are his commandments? There's the same commandments of God. Mm-hmm. Thou shalt not have the God before me. Don't do pagan practices. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Mm-hmm. When you hear that, would Joseph or uh, Jacob heard that Joseph was alive, and we hear that Jesus is alive. He's, he's, he's a living savior. He's not just a religious, religious icon. Right. Right? It's not just church playing church in a building. This is a real relationship. Mm -hmm. And what he says and commands is really real. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So when he hears this, Jacob's heart grew numb. Mm -hmm. The Greek says it grew numb. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it's, you know, why? I I guess I am going to try to pronounce (laughs) it. (laughs) So why a poglibo? Why a poglibo? Something like that. His heart grew numb. When you look at it, um, let's see. Um, okay. The King James says fainted. They have uh, pug, 
Spug. It means to be sluggish, cease, be feeble, faint, be slacked. Slothful, And you really. go down. Yeah, well, it's slacked. Not really slothful, but feeble, faint. Mm. It's not slothful like uh, you're lazy. You, 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 you faint. Mm. Um, as, you look, as you look at the Hebrew word, it's uh, Strong 6313. It means to grow numb. Mm. To be feeble, to be numbed, be feeble, to be be numbed. That's his lack of faith. Mm-hmm. That's lochek min. That's what that explains. You're numb. Your hearing is numb. Your heart is numb. And it's it's the literal translation would be Jacob's heart grew numb when he heard this. Didn't believe it. Or in other words, he was stunned. Hmm. He was stunned. Like what? I don't. I can't believe. I'm just stunned. And then Jacob did not believe. He had lohichmin. He had no faith. He didn't believe the good news. So you think about Joseph as a Christological figure. When that good news is preached to you, not just under salvation, but under living life here and more abundantly. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's that his deliverance, his healing, all that stuff. When that's preached to you, does your heart grow numb? Mm-hmm. Are you in disbelief? Are you stunned? I, I, I can't believe good. Uh, Jesus was all about love. I can't believe that, you know, they would say that homosexual, you know, you can't be gay and love Jesus. You know what I mean? Right. And Jacob did not believe. He had no faith. Lo hechmin. He was stunned. But then the scripture says, when Jacob heard the words of Joseph. So I want you to think about that. When he heard the words of Joseph, was Joseph there? No. Where did he hear the words of Joseph from? His other sons, Mm -hmm. Joseph's brothers, came back and said, Joseph said this. Come to me and live here. And when I'm saying... They were the witnesses. Yes. Yes. So when Joseph heard the words of, uh, I mean, sorry, when Jacob heard the words of Joseph, something happened to him. Now, what's that scripture that says? Romans 10, 17. We'll read that. It says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. And there's another one that says, how can anyone hear unless someone preaches or tells them? You know? Mm Mm-hmm. So unless someone's telling them what Jesus has said, the words, right? The real words, not like this guy on YouTube who's telling them that aliens created mankind. Mm -hmm. So unless someone tells them the real words, how are they going to not be stunned? How are they going to not have no faith? Right. Right? So they tell Jacob, Jacob does it. First, he has no faith, and then he hears the words. And then secondly, Jacob saw. He saw with his eyes all that. So you have to believe first before you can see. Yes. And you know what? That reminds me of Job. Because Mm -hmm. Job says, I had heard about you, but Mm -hmm. now I see you. Amen. At the end of all of Job's trials, he said, I had heard. I thought I knew you. I'd heard all about you, but now... I see you. you. Mm -hmm. So after Jacob hears the words of Joseph, then Jacob saw all that Joseph sent to take him back. Mm. Think of Christ. Once you hear the words of Christ, you hear his doctrine, his truth, Then you see all that he's done, he's still alive, and all that he's sent to take you back. Mm -hmm. Get on the wagon. He sent, Joseph sent wagons. Jesus sends the Bible bus. Mm -hmm. Get on the bus, man. Then he saw. So what happens once he heard and once he saw, Jacob's spirit revived. And when he had, and when he revived, guess what he had? Faith. He had faith. He went from 
no faith to faith. He went from no mind to mind. Mm -hmm. He was in a state of motion before, and then he went to mind. So like when you hear the word of God, you can either hear it and, and your, your spirit, your heart's not quickened, but Mm -hmm. you have to hear it and your, and the spirit has to quicken your, your heart Mm -hmm. in order to believe and -hmm. to have that faith. No man comes to the father except the spirit draw him, draw him. Mm -hmm. And when he draws you and you, that faith kicks in, the spirit's revived. At the same time, that spirit is revived because before the spirit is numb, mm-hmm. the heart is numb, can't see. Then the spirit's revived. You can see, you can hear, you ah, it's all there. And then I love this because in the scripture, it's very subtle. He's called Jacob through that whole passage. And then suddenly he's referred to as Israel. Mm-hmm. This is an Israel said, isn't that amazing? Yes. Jacob was numb. Jacob didn't believe. Jacob heard. Jacob saw. Jacob's spirit was revived. And now he's Israel. He goes, it's it's almost like he goes from the flesh to the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And now Israel said, it's an incredible name change right in there. Yep. He says, I'm convinced. He had faith. He had chmin. He says, I'm convinced my son Joseph is alive. And that's exactly what we need to do when we hear the doctrines of Christ. I'm convinced that my Savior is alive. Mm -hmm. That his death and resurrection was real and that he is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he's given us all authority over these demonic entities and he has subdued and been victorious over the princes and the powers and the magistrates over the, over the air, Mm -hmm. including the one this guy talks about created man, those fallen angels. They didn't create me. I have authority over them through Christ. That's what the living Christ is. That's what that faith is in a living savior. All I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified for me. Amen. Amen, Mr. Powell. Mm-hmm. So Israel says, then he says, I will go to him. So faith comes by hearing of the word. And then he sees what was sent. He believes. And then he says, I'm going to him. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take up my cross. I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to follow Jesus Amen. because he's the living savior. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. But when you have no faith, you have emptiness. It's filled with other stuff. It's I'm not going to deny myself because it's all about me and the whole, the universe centers around me Two, I'm not going to pick up a cross. Oh my gosh. Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. And three, I'm not going to follow Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. I'm going to follow Mm Cheez-Its and we're going to play religion and we're going to play uh, a weird form of worldly Christianity, and we're going to go off in that direction because mm-hmm. you have no faith in the real living Savior. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. That's good preaching. And then right without there. the Spirit, you're being led of the Spirit, then you are led of the flesh. Yes, your spirit's not revived, mm-hmm. but your flesh is because you're fleshed out. All right. Mm-hmm. So Israel says, I'm going to go to him, and that's exactly what happens. So there is a contrast between Jacob's numbed heart and his revived spirit. That's right. There's a contrast there. So lack of faith is identified with a numbed heart. Mm. Lack of faith is identified with a numb heart, folks. Faith is identified with a renewed spirit. A renewed spirit or a revived spirit. So when his spirit was renewed, he believed. Mm -hmm. And in John 6, 63, it says, it is the, Jesus saying this, Mm -hmm. it is the spirit that quickens the flesh and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm. That's what renews the spirit. You know, I I remember 
uh, just like if it was yesterday. Over 10 years ago in 2006, when I repented of my sins and came to the Lord, the Lord specifically told me, um, you have to have a spirit-filled man lay hands on you. I, I am not lying to you. This is what I was told. That's right. And I went to a church I would never go to that I wouldn't like, you know, some Pentecostal, simply a God church. You know, I, I would never want those people to touch me. But I my direction was to have a, a spirit-filled man lay hands on me. And I went down at the altar call, and I just cried like nothing else. I mean, later on, the pastor even told me, he says, it's very rare to see a man just ball like that and um and i was as i was praying remember i'd been away from the lord for 30 some odd years so i didn't know squat but as i was praying the thing that kept going in my my spirit or in my mind was creating me a clean heart Mm -hmm. renew my spirit that's really what it just that's what kept going over and over my head and i felt these hands lay hand on me one on my chest one on my back Mm-hmm. And I heard a voice, and it was a man, and he was praying over me. My eyes were closed. They were swollen shut from tears. I never saw this guy. Mm-hmm. And he laid hands on me, and you know what he prayed? Lord, renew his spirit. Create in him a new heart. Amen. That's He prayed exactly what was in my head. Isn't that cool? That, that is, is absolutely amazing. Then my spirit was revived, right? So let's look, Ms. Kapow, at some of the prophets, right? Faith. Hechmin and a new heart. Let's let's talk about that. Faith and a new heart, because they're synonymous with the prophets. And Jeremiah thirty one says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their heart, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. That is so, so, so heavy. Mm -hmm. But you know what's interesting? If you go to John 20, Jesus said unto Mary, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But I go to my bro- but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mm. All the same. Mm-hmm. And that is that is some serious serious stuff. Mm-hmm. The change and that's what I mean. there was a huge change. What Christ did, what He sent to take us back. This mm-hmm. is it: a renewed spirit, a renewed heart. See, and it's the Holy Spirit that continues to teach us and to lead us into truth. Yes. You don't need a man. You don't need a person. Don't follow people at all. They don't know any more than you do. I don't know any more than you do. Just Miss Capel and I are just brothers and sisters reiterating what God gives us and sharing it. Yeah. That's all we are. That's right. That's all we've ever been. How about Ezekiel 36? It says, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will put will I put it within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Very similar to Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Now let's look at some no faith in the prophets. Lo hechmin. No faith is synonymous with a numbness, right? So mm-hmm. faith is synonymous with a new heart. No faith is synonymous with numbness. Habakkuk. Habakkuk uh, 1, 4 and 1, 5 says, Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. See, they're dull. Uh, the law, it says the law is slack, but the law is paralyzed here. It's paralyzed and they're, they're numb to it. Mm -hmm. They're numb to the words. They're numb to the law, the the law of God. And how about prophet David in Psalms 51 10 says, create in me a new pure heart. O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. 
And that's what I was praying in 2006 when I was at the altar. My eyes swollen shut. I couldn't even open them. Just bawling for hours like a baby. And that man, spirit-filled man of God, laid his hands on me, chest Mm -hmm. back, and said, create in him a new heart, God. Amen. Renew his spirit. I mean, just a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So to preach anything else, to preach anything else other than faith in a living God, and that includes the guy who's saying that Elohim is Satan as a fallen angel and his fallen angels creating a dom in his image Mm -hmm. because that is contrary to faith in the living God, the creator God. You're saying Satan and fallen angels created the earth Mm -mm. and the heavens and the beasts and the seas. You're giving Satan a fallen angel the status of the creator God. And he doesn't know this. Mm -hmm. The people that listen to him don't know this. They don't open their own Bible and read verse. All you have to do is read one through 25 Mm -hmm. and it'll go, "Uh oh, this doesn't make sense now. Yeah. Because what he says is totally taken out of context. And he has a pretext because he wants to show you a Nike commercial and how that's prophetic. Mm-hmm. There's a problem. Yeah, There's a problem with this this guy. And plus the fact that there have been one the people that have tried to um, show him his error, but he will not listen. Numerous people. Mm-hmm. Numerous good, yeah. biblically good. sound people. Yep. Have uh, there's there's other videos on this guy showing that um, he's a false false teacher, mm-hmm. but he won't he won't accept it. Mm-mm. He won't accept it because he has a special gift. He has a gnosis. He's gnostic that you don't have that the spirit of God gave him. And so if you come against him, you come against the spirit of God. You blaspheme the spirit, and you're going to go to the pit, the pit, like he says. You're going to go to the pit. He always says, "I love you in Christ," but you're going to the pit. Mm-hmm. Um, so to preach anything other than faith in the living God is leading others into numbness. You're leading them into motion, mind, no mind Mm -hmm. to get demonically possessed, to have bats attack your face and to go schizophrenic. You're leading people into numbness, into motion, into emptiness so that void could be filled with demonic doctrines of devils. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Rather than leading them into renewal, there's only one way to lead to renewal. What's that? Hear the word and see what mm-hmm. God has sent. Your heart's renewed. That's faith. So false preachers will be held accountable to the words, won't they? And then Jesus says at the end, do you, I don't know if you have the scripture where he says, when I return, will I find faith on earth? That's in uh, Luke 18, 8. And that's exactly what Jesus asked. I can read it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he says, will I find faith when I return? And I, it always puzzles me. You know, when I read that and I'm thinking, um, let me answer that for you. Probably not. Says uh, verse eight says, "I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth?" Probably not. Not a whole lot of it. So even Jesus questioned that. Mm-hmm. Is there going to be motion? Mind no mind. Is there going to be hechmin lo hechmin? Am I going to find hechmin on earth? Find faith. Super important, but not just unto salvation but unto keeping that and doing the Christian walk. It's, Sanctification. Yeah. It's not something that just happens and you walk away from it and then you go mush and no mind and go into contemplative prayer and Christian yoga, Chris yoga. No such thing. No. We're running a race, yeah. you know, and uh, the treasure is Christ. Mm-hmm. So we should run as if we're the only one that's going to win that race. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the vigor that we must run this race yeah, with. And get that prize. Mm-hmm. Not like one beating the air, boxing mm-hmm. the air, or just shadow boxing, but one actually competing mm-hmm. in a real wrestling match. Right? Yep. yep. You have anything else to add, Ms. Um, I wanted to 
leave this with everyone, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it is written, I hath not seen or ear ha- neither, or ear heard, ear heard neither, have entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. You, what you just did is you just gave the word of Jesus, just like the words of Joseph were given to Jacob. And so people can see what was sent Mm -hmm. to take them back. That's what you just did in that scripture. I do have one more thing to add. I forgot. (laughs) I was noticing in Genesis 46, 30. Do you have that? Um, I I I, I can get it real quick here somewhere. In 46, 30. I don't want to take it out of concept. See, uh, bah, bah, bah. Oh, they, the Jacob and the family went to the land of Goshen, right? And as soon as they got to the land of Goshen, they said, land of Goshen. As soon as they got there, Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel. That's his father, Jacob, Israel, his father to Goshen and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Now check this out in verse 30 as we think Christologically on on Joseph. And Israel said unto Joseph, now let me die since I have seen thy face Mm. because thou art yet alive. Mm. I'm going to read that again. Israel says to his son, When he sees him, now let me die since I have seen thy face because thou art yet alive. Jacob in this context is saying, I can die now because I have seen you and I know you are alive. You're not dead. And we can say that we can now die to ourselves. Let Paul and Linda Die. We can die now. Our flesh, our desires, our fleshly motivations, all the worldly entrapments around us, we can die to that now Mm -hmm. since we have seen for ourselves that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is alive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ha ha ha. I just got some chills. I know. It's like that scripture in Psalms where it says, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, you had me look up Galatians uh, 2.20. Yes. Now, see how that applies, that Paul, Paul applies this in that chapter. Mm-hmm. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He says the same thing. I can die now. I'm, in fact, he says, I am dead. Mm-hmm. I'm dead to the flesh. But yet I live. What does he live in? Not him, more, not himself anymore. The Apostle Paul is dead. He lives in Christ. Mm-hmm. This is the new man. The when new- it says... Um, for I am crucified with Christ, your old man is dead, buried with Christ. And now the new man is living in Christ. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? It's, yeah. And, and you go amazing. all the way back to Genesis forty five thirty, and Israel says unto Joseph, Now let me die since I have seen thy face because thou art yet alive. Mm-hmm. And someone wants to tell me the Bible is not spiritually written. There's nothing else like it Mm-mm. in the entire universe. That's why in Corinthians it says, I have not seen, ear had not heard, and nothing has entered in the heart of man the things of which God has prepared for them that love him. Wow. You just, once again, you just told them the words of Jesus, mm-hmm. and then you showed them what he sent right. for them to take him back. You can't even imagine Mm-mm. the stuff that's prepared for you. Nope. So when he returns, will he have faith? Will he see faith? Will there be faith on the earth? Well, I'm telling you what, there better be faith in you. That's right. There better be faith in you or I'm going to be mad. (laughs) I'm going to be very (laughs) upset. All right. All right. Do you have anything to add? Nope. Okay. 
If you give everybody a choo choo. I give a choo choo. Ciao, baby. Bye.